I was asked to give a sort of overview of uh, what happened <coughs> in the last period of time in the field of fine arts. I have to torture you and go far back in history, even further back in history than the people who spoke uh, before. I will have some guests with me. I see trees are green, red roses too. The first one is a <coughs> TV I production made by Peter Wolf and Altsiebler for Austrian Broadcasting Corporation, the Public Broadcasting Corporation, which was made on the occasion of an anniversary of Stirium Autumn and that I will have run in the background of my presentation. You will see several key figures of Stirium Autumn Festival uh, from the early days to uh, the day of the anniversary, and probably will have will hear some comments in German language in a very uh, small. This is Peter Wolf, who was one of the many people in this radio broadcast corporation with which beloved and cared for us, the people from the art world in this city, which turned out to be a paradise for artists in the period of time when I came to Graz. And when I came to Graz, it turned out that I was completely uh, enthusiastic, but on the other hand side, I had no idea to whom to address my sort of juvenile aggression and my, my inspiration of you know, being a leftist intellectual radical subject because everything was so nice and cozy in this city. And uh, to give you an idea how that, uh, to give you an idea about my arguments, why it is like that, I go back in history, and history is the wrong term to explain that. I should argue that it's my story. This is a quotation from some weird jazz musician called San Ran. I've seen a beautiful video about him, or film about him, where he says, Don't ask me about history. History is about his story. Don't ask me about their story. The only thing I can present you is my story, and I'm not interested in anything else than my story. So my story is a small theory which is partly shared by many people, but partly I suppose that many people would oppose this idea. Graz, as we have heard before, never ever was the place for progressive political rebellion in the field of art. Even the bourgeois revolution of 1948 was more or less cancelled or reduced to the famous one minute, as mentioned in the lecture before. Most of the concessions were, were, were reached to negotiations even before somebody could call for weapons or for the armed fight. And on the main square of the city, for the foreigners, I don't know if you have ever been there already. On the main square of the city, which is rather beautiful, is a statue of some figure, and one would expect in a normal middle European city that this is some sort of revolutionary, a radical poet or philosopher responsible for enlightened ideas. But in our city, in the city of Graz, it's the Archduke Johann, uh, brother and son of the Habsburg Emperor of the Austrian-Hungarian monarchy, who left the court in Vienna, married a bourgeois woman, and devoted his life to the sort of modernization of the province of Styria in the early 19th century. And he especially emphasized on the improvement of cultural and educational institutions, and there's almost no institution in the city which he did not somehow co-found or at least improve its economic basis at that period of time, and it's himself who, is, who gave the name for the uh, museums and research institutions of the provincial government called Ioanneum. And there's a sort of similar figure in Vienna called Joseph II, and in Austria we use the term of Josephinism for a specific Austrian habit, and we could call this specific Austrian habit Ioanism in 
exterior, which means which that, means that there, there is somebody above us who has to be the good guy and plays the role of the liberal, enlightened, progressive politician who guides us in our struggle. And my experience in this city was surprisingly, yes, it is, it was. Many people nowadays argue that this period of time is gone and that is part of the sort of tendency of a more radical language within the art world than before. Formally or formalistically, the, the language was much more radical in the 60s than nowadays, but I suppose from the point of view of... Oh, it's coping. And and so when I came to Graz, I learned from my elder colleagues that, you know, if you want to get a funding for a project, just go directly to the local minister for cultural affairs and ask for it. Don't apply, you know. Writing a paper is something for idiots. You have, you can write the paper afterwards, you got the promise to get the funding. And the same happened with other different institutions which somehow nurtured us, feeded us, hospitalized us in this beautiful paradise of contemporary advanced art. But we could also go back to the sort of uh, history to argue why had these politicians from the 50, 60s to the 80s and partly 90s been so radically enthusiastic and engaged or ambitious for fine art. Some people argue that the reason might be found in the prehistory of this city when Graz had a quite important position during the Austrian monarchy. During the 14th century to the 17th century, Graz was the residence of Habsburg monarchy, and from this place, from the city of Graz, they controlled the part of the monarchy called Inner Austria, which meant Styria, the province where we are, Carinthia, the province where these radical singing right-wing politicians are from, we saw in the first presentation, large parts of Italy and Slovenia, which were part of the monarchy at that period of time. So Graz was the capital of some larger Styria, which is still part of the imagination of many locals and especially of many conservative politicians, which also ask, ask uh, for a redefinition of local culture, concentrating on that geographic sphere. Um, but already in 1690, the, the Habsburg court left the city of Graz because they feared the regular, which is of course not true, but the, the, the attacks of Osmanic forces, which are, which are coming from the southeast and passed by Graz, and Graz was of course the first in an Austrian city of some relevance to be reached by the foreign armies. And therefore they left Graz and Graz from that time on became some sort of location or destination of second rate within the monarchy or third rate in comparison to Vienna. This was of course also sort of a decrease of self-confidence within the city. 1918 after the First World War were lost, all the part of the territories were lost to the enemies in war and the country, Austria and Styria especially, shrunk down to the very small size it is. It has nowadays at the margins of the national border to Slovenia then called Yugoslavia. And many of its inhabitants were still dreaming of these great times of the great big Styria and when Adolf Hitler promised a sort of increase if in, 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 in competence and, and power for that region and some sort of territorial extension. Many, many people of Syria and Graz were, were fighting on his side long before he crossed the borders of Austria. In 34, there was a putsch. I googled for the English word and it's supposed to be the same. A sort of illegal uprising of illegal fascists against the then austro fascist Austrian government, which was beaten, successfully beaten by the Austrian army. So the Austrian clerical fascists succeeded in 34 against the German right wing fascists, which were Austrians, of course. And when Hitler entered Graz in 38, he either, when he either conquered Austria or when he was welcomed to Austria by a large part of the population, depending on the point of view. Uh, Graz made a huge ceremony party, or a, let's say memorial party, designed by Hans Reichenfelder, a 
rather talented, formerly modernist graphic designer who changed style fitting to the, to the fascist uh, corporate design. And then Hitler honored the, pri uh, the, the, the courage of the Graz illegal Nazis of 34 by giving Graz a title. And the title was The City of the National Uprising. And the second title was Bollwerk gegen Südosten, which means bastion or bulwark against the southeast danger. And that is something which become part of the, uh, of the common unconsciousness in many of these sort of uh, popular right-wing discussions within this city. Stockbar also designed uh, the memorial, which we will see later in the presentation of Werner Fans, and he also designed uh, some pretty nice, super conservative Gobelin show with the same title as the City Bollwerk gegen Südosten und Stadt der Volkserhebung, which was hanging in the public uh, city hall until 2009 without any complaints. So in this city, uh, fascist uh, propaganda arts could survive even in the most public building of the city until very recently when it was uh, removed by after, af after it was somehow discovered from the cultural scene as being a sort of disastrous uh, image for contemporary 20 or 21st century culture. And as you have seen in, in a very well seen in the presentation of, of Herwig at the beginning, this fascist past of Graz is still a rather productive driving force for many people uh, involved in the art world and the cultural field. Graz as the dubious, Graz with its dubious reputation of the city for upheaval a national rebellion for, not against Hitler, and a sort of unconvincible stronghold for fascist thought, or as a rather boring city dominated by retired people, was a motivation for cultural redefinition for many of many generations, even of politicians, intellectuals, and cultural activists from the 60s up to now, as we have seen in, in, in Herrick's presentation. And surprisingly, many of them have a conservative and Catholic background that was somehow oriented towards uh, liberation theolo theologies uh, from, the, from South America, quite popular in the uh, 60s and 70s. But they are progressive, the, the progressive attempts of, of the cultural representations found a quite resistant opposition within the, within the general public of Graz, which had been radically conservative or even right-wing. So just, just, just being an artist was already considered to be a sort of useless occupation or a provocation by the most of the, by most of the people. And the right-wing activists were quite smart in developing their own sort of uh, interventions. My most favorite one at that period of time, I have to argue that I really was impressed by that, uh, was the unloading of a heap of dung from a trailer in front of an exhibition space. So there was a huge heap of that awful smelling dung. While this uh, activist was doing a sort of staccato talk in front of the presentation of the artist, which was Hermann Nietzsche, who gave a very boring, very serious talk about his organ Mysterium theater. And then there was this specific intervention. At that period of time, I didn't let, let yet know he was. He was uh, Mr. Huema, a very well-known Austrian right-wing activist who appeared at many big exhibitions, accusing almost every artist for public uh, pornography and uh, blaming uh, religious symbols. And as we have heard again in the 60s, there was no upheaval again. There were the one-minute revolution. But instead of, the, of, a, of, a huge, uh, let's say of, a, of a huge radical conflict in this city, many things were already solved or prepared before 68. 68 was the year when the steering autumn was invented. But in 59, for example, Forum Stadtpark 
was founded, a quite important institution for art at that period of time. The, the Triennale, Trigon, was invented, a three, three countries exhibition, and several things again. So Graz was in an, the, the, the cultural scene of Graz was in an atmosphere of departure, beginning in 50, in the 50s already, Forum Stadtberg was considered to be something like a multidisciplinary laboratorium for fine art, literature, theater, architecture, and any other art form imaginable. And it was organized in these different sections, like disciplines of art. But surprisingly, when it was, the, the people needed to fight under brackets, only one year to get a vacant cafeteria in the center of the Stadtpark as a, as a venue for their activi act activists, uh, for their cultural reproductions and cultural productions and representations. And even within one year, they collected that much money from private donators that they could renovate that building and open the building with an exhibition called Confessions and Confrontations, which was surprisingly sanctified by the bishop and accompanied by a concert of the uh, brass bands of the military forces of the Republic of Austria. In the very same year, the first edition of a literature magazine manuscript appeared which somehow branded the reputation of Graz as a city, or as a sort of capital of culture. This is the place where Wolfgang Bauer presented his first absurd and existentialist dramas, and Peter Handke, who studied in Graz at that period of time, uh, got somehow access to the professional field of literature. And in 63, just a few years later, the official gallery or museum of the municipal of, of the of the province Landesgalerie yeah. invented Trigon and an exhibition that should compare art production from Austria Yugoslavia and Italy these territories territories which belong to the former inner Austria the bigger stereo in the imagination of Austrian uh, Styrian politicians but, of, but of, of very big importance were the educational institutions. The music, music academy had the first jazz, acad jazz department all over Europe, one of three in all over the world, had the, one of the first electronic music departments, and many of the people teaching either at the music academy, either at the faculty of architecture, or at the many high schools were part of the architecture of the, of the art scene of that early period of time. Many of them somehow uh, educated themselves within the scene of local people. But of even more importance had been the enormous engagement and ambition of the Austrian Radio Broadcasts Corporation, which I managed before who recorded almost all the readings of poets or filmed whatever they could film. They really made long-time features on public TV shown all over Austria. And they supported or commissioned artists to write and co-produce radio and TV plays. And since 68, they also produced their own festival for contemporary experimental music that was founded by the director of this institution and by Peter Witscher, who later became the uh, intendant of Stirimotum. So the, the board of Stirimotum, with many leading politicians on board of the board, somehow generated the synergies within the city of Graz, the sort of ambition of inter multidisciplinary approach of Forum Stadtberg with the international competition represented by Trigon and the financial power of Austrian Radio Broadcast Corporation and the sort of media coverage they could guarantee. So each institution could somehow apply or was automatically part of the game and got some additional funding to produce at least one bigger production a year which was shown in this sort of condensed period of autumn and got a really huge media coverage by the support of the radio corporation, which brought Graz on the map of some sort of leading art city in Europe and gained a rather wide recognition. But one part of the myth of the city of Graz were its, uh, the steering autumn, were its scandals. And of course, this media coverage was 
uh, had an enormous part within the scandals. The people from TV and radio programs were all in favor for avant-garde art, but they made some sort of slight mistakes, or, or let's say the media coverage got out of control. A good example was first thing, rather, rather simple, in 71 and 72, there was the first scandal. You see the poster on top here. This poster nowadays would look rather boring and uh, uninteresting, but there had been a series of posters made the year before and the year after by the graphic designer and artist Karl Neubacher in, workshop, in workshops with, with laser groups of Styrian industrial companies. So it was a, it was a sort of a participatory project, developing posters all together, which were then, of course, shown all over the city. And this poster was interpreted as a person who takes a shit upon the city by the majority of a population which uh, got extremely angry and found their allies in some conservative newspapers. And in 75, the photograph uh, below is representing that. Wolfgang Bauer's theater piece Gespenster, or Ghosts, was shown at the theater here. The rather ambitious TV station uh, recorded that and broadcasted it, I think, late at time which produced a lot of rumor and aggression. So the days afterwards, all over Europe, radio st a TV station showed the very special scenes of that piece at prime time on the news, and there were some sex scenes on stage that played a minor role in a story that reflected the, the dramatist's own clique, his friends, and his, ironically, his blockade uh, and crisis to write new pieces. Hans Koren, the main conservative politician, co-founder of Steel Mountain, president of the provincial parliament, uh, was accused personally to be responsible for introducing pornography in uh, public TV. And he, re he retired one year later and was, uh, in several interviews shown, he was really shocked about the sort of aggressive uh, approach towards him that he had to suffer from. Quite interestingly, from my point of view, was that I learned that the, main, that the main actor of this piece, who was playing the poet, was definitely the son of this politician. So the son of the very conservative politician was an actor playing that sort of scandalous role, which is a quite nice evidence for the very, long, very close relationship between political establishment and art scene. So it's familiar in the, really, in the real sense of the world. But media presence was also part of the art scene as well. As you might know, the, let's see, the late 70s, early 80s with the period of time, or early, early 70s with the period of time, late 60s and early 70s with the period of time when media art was becoming popular and uh, people wanted to, or artists wanted to get access to with their own work to media. And Graz was quite progressive in that sense because they had very advanced media art exhibitions already in the early 70s. But from my point of view, much more interesting was that a local shoe company Das Stück fand dennoch Beachtung im viel zitierten deutschen Foto. So carefully, because the sound might be rather loud now. So a local shoe company, then run by a middle class, upper middle class family enterprise, was hiring the former curator of New Gallery, Horst Habel, to work in the public relations department. He gathered around a number of artists, filmmakers, graphic designers, copywriters, to develop the new logo and trademark of the shoe company which was called Franz, and communicated that via rather avant-garde TV spots that I saw first when I was 12 years old, and I was really impressed by that. And I've seen many quotations in the internet that people said, if there would be any product having such great commercials nowadays, I would buy these shoes whatever, 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 whenever I like them or not. It doesn't matter. It's, it's, it was such a great stuff. And I hope that works now. Franz. Franz. Franz.
Franz, 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 immer. Franz. So another, another one, just to show you the, the spectrum of uh, commercials. Bing, 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 catacomb, bomb, bomb, knatteratatatatatata, pistol, pushka, pestilent, schiss, schiss, suizidischen Psycho, schiss, schiss. Ich tu dir nichts, sagt der Dings, sagt der Dings, der sagt nichts, tu ich dir nichts, sagt der Dings, ich tu dir nichts, allerdings, peppertete, de patte, patentierte, packel, packel, aber auch Big Bang Bang ist zu eng. Franz. So I'm uh, currently not paid by this company, but at that period of time, I, I have to confess that I was basically also paid by this company. Whenever I needed money for uh, some small cultural productions of myself and my friends, we went to this shoe company asked Mr. Habel, proposed our project in words only, and we had to sign some paper of a production of a shoe, you know, commercial, where we get, and then we were sent with a small paper to the cash desk of the factory hall, when they still produced shoes in Graz, and we got money for cash, and we were asked to mention the logo on the, you know, invitations cards of our uh, projects, and that was all our agreement. And this was part of this paradise of the early 80s when I came to Graz. So by so much love and care by politicians or by private people, it was really difficult uh, to develop some sort of political action within or in this city. In, main, in, in the most of the cases, it was just a fight for, for one's own media or to do in the sort of distinction and competition between different meters that, that, that everybody tried to push its own. And against the sort of self-perception, self uh, many of these institutions had rather extremely close relationships to politicians, not only that one is the, the actor and the other one is the minister, but even in Forum Stadtberg, where I worked for, the secretary of the governor was responsible for, for financial affairs for quite a long time, and House of Architecture, uh, Edis invention was, in, was found by a very ambitious uh, person of the building department who even financed and partly uh, managed these institutions by his own staff. So within this very, very familiar relationship, nobody, nobody became aware about it anymore. It was just normal and naturalized. Of course, the, 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 the means, uh, the resources were not justly distributed, but everybody had its small, let's say, checkpot where he could get a little or larger part of support. Work for Steering Autumn Festival, for example, or for the big exhibitions uh, created by the, by the province of Styria, I call them Expo, they were some sort of regional expos. Uh, which started in 59 in the same year when Forum Stadtbot was grounded and the first issue of course featured was, not of course featured was, but not surprisingly was featured, uh, was devoted to the founding father of all educational systems in Graz, the Archduke of Johann. And 64, just one year after Trigon, the three country exhibition was invented, this, ex this expo was devoted to Graz as the capital of Inner Austria. So there's a sort of continuous demand uh, reintegrating Graz to be the capital of a larger territory since the, let's say, 14th century up to now. And many artists, architects, and historians were very well paid participating in the design and conception of these exhibitions. When I came to Graz, I had my sort of own absurd approach to get money, and this is, uh, sounds rather unserious, but the only thing I knew when I came to Graz is that I, 
I didn't yet know how to get there and didn't really dare to go to the positions themselves. So we had the idea to make a music video for a, for a friend's punk band and ask Mr. Habel, whom we know from how many contacts, that he should finance our project and he should convince the uh, so, so, so Minister of Cultural Affairs of the city of Graz to play the main role because we wanted to play a sort of hijack of a politician to uh, get real subsidy by him afterwards. And uh, Habla could really convince these politicians. He dressed up, he rented his own Mercedes-Benz, and he wanted to behave like a super conservative politician. We made these shootings, and after we finished the shootings, we offered the material we made to the both political parties and in exchange for further funding. This was a bit too strange for them, so we were banned from public funding for another two years. But that was not such a big problem because in between we could go to the shoe factory and get some substitution for our more or less serious art production. It was the period of time of the early 80s, and early 80s was the, was the time of genius dilettants, so nobody needed to be educated and everybody could do everything. Political, politically correctness was unknown. Uh, the only thing we, we knew that we, we are, are anti-fascist by definition just because of producing art in this city, you're on the right side of the political spectrum as far as the art is uh, not uh, social, socialist realist or watercolor painting. So when I came to Graz, I skipped some parts for those who are capable of reading German, it's all published already. When I came in Graz in 79, as a sort of young guy from the countryside uh, and a freshman at the university, I was completely busy with different problems, private problems, so I missed the first dear autumn in 79, where there had been a first exhibition in public space in show cases of, uh, in, in, in window showcases of shops, which also caused some sort of small scandal at the period of time because people were not used to that sort of presentation. Nowadays, nobody can imagine that anybody gives a shit on something presented in a, in a, in a showcase of a, of a shop. And in the second year, I, I figured out that there was Sterium Autumn, and I went to the, one of the most important side venues of that year, which was called Open House. It was in a concert hall, and it showed one venue after the other with a sort of entrance fee of 10 shillings, which was re the representative of a big beer. And we had no idea what, about what was on display because we had no idea about the contemporary international art scene, but we attended almost everything and, and devoted one 10 shillings. Later on, we faked in invitation cards ourselves, so we didn't even pay anything anymore, and, but nobody ca even cared about faking invitation cards for steam modem events at that period of time. But what was quite interesting at that, uh, Yeah, that period was that I, I saw Laurie Anderson singing Oh Superman, and I didn't know that she is famous or will become a superstar. I saw Petoleshko's costume performances, which were rather punky, and I saw uh, Lydia Lunch's sort of punk poetry, which inspired us a lot. But in, the, in another year, I saw an exhibition about self-organized cultural centers all over Europe exhibited in this venue, and it was the most trashy exhibition I've ever seen. It was more trashy than the Berlin Biennale this year, but the Berlin Biennale this year was exposed in the white cube of Kunstwerke, so there was a sort of contrast between pretty nice architecture and the style of presentation. Well, in that case, there was a really trashy architecture of this non, not yet renovated old theater, cinema, concert hall. So it was exposed at the, at the hallways, in the lobby, and then on the lawn in front of it. It looked like a happening, and everybody just made some demo, you know, manifestation, aesthetic science. And within this program, I saw a film which was brand new from Zürich called Zürich Brennt, so Zürich Burns. And it showed some... things we basically did not know from our 
calm Graz situation, and we would also wouldn't have known uh, against whom or for whom to fight with police. But then some things happened in Vienna, and a bunch of people of Graz went to Vienna regularly, participating in things like that. I was part of that. I have to confess, I have no idea why I was there and what it was for. It was just part of a sort of 20-something career to be to radicalize oneself. Just recently, there was an exhibition in, in the Vienna Historical Museum about the 80s movement in Austria, and it was also the argument there was almost no, no movement. There was almost no conflict. Uh, squattering houses is something Austrians are, in a Josephinistic system, are not really that enth enthusiastic about it. And also in Graz, we have a very limited form of that movement. In that period of time, I saw this move, these images, I wanted to be like that. I saw the other, other artistic representations, I wanted to make something like that, but didn't yet know how to start it. But in the same time, Graz became a really extremely, let's say, prof the, the art scene became extremely professionalized, also the fine art scene. Uh, three galleries opened up. The Kunstverein was invented. The Kunstverein was invented by Peter Parkish, then ex-Grad citizen, uh, running a private gallery in Vienna, asking the, mayor, uh, the cultural minister of the city of Graz, Strobel, to co-found a Kunstverein. A Kunstverein, from the German point of view, is an independent liberal institution. In the city of Graz, you just ask the main politician you know, to, to do it with you. And in, the, in this Kunstverein, you show, of course, the same artists, you pimp the artists which you sell in your gallery in Vienna. But that's Austrian system, and maybe that system everywhere, but Austrians are never ashamed about that. That's our, that's our policy. But we have to be very thankful about uh, Parker's initiative because he, he internationalized uh, uh, the, the, the fine art scene at that period of time. And again, from my point of view, when it came, when it came about politics, the only enemy we found where we could canalize our aggressions had been uh, the many, many fascists still living in this city. And again, within my sort of private experience with these punk friends of the 80s, we made some nice demonstrations against uh, Otto Skrinzi, you would know he's from Carinthia. He was a psychiatrist, officially working all those years despite his very obscure political opinions. I wouldn't be accused for calling him a fascist so because he confesses himself, so it's not, you needn't cover yourself or, or use some words. He was candidating to become president of the Republic of Austria in 80, oops, four and had an election campaign, of course, passing by the city of national upheaval, Graz, where he expected to have a lot of fans, and of course he had a lot of fans here. He made his speech in a room called Heimatsaal, so, the, you know, the, in the Heimat Museum, which is the his, some sort of historic museum with a quite nice title, and as it was fashionable at that period of time, he hired the Graz skinheads to protect his event. And since we had a lot of trouble with these skinheads anyway, we agreed to, to meet them for a sort of street battle in front of the opening of this uh, fa fascist demonstration. But since these skinheads were much better in fighting than we were, we, uh, we called police before. And it was just opposite of the police station, so it was not so difficult for the police to show up, but we wanted to have the guarantee that they are not sitting in the office, you know, and just watching us being beaten by these skinheads. We wanted them to be really block them off from us. So when we got the guarantee by some spy that police is there, we appeared with some sort of children tool-like weapons, like you play Indians, you know, and they were all made of very subtle material so that we couldn't hurt anybody, and then we showed up there, sang some war song, and shoot our weapons across the police corridor against our neo-fascist enemies, and this turned, to be, uh, turned out to be very successful because they were really pissed off by this sort of miscredit, you know, of this uh, making joke of, them, joke of them in front of TV stations, radio stations, and police, and we got a nice police record. Uh, Bogo Erjauts, later for an exhibition, collected these police records or asked them at the police station and exhibited them when the, when the 
you know, secret policemen had noted this absurd situation that happened. And uh, of course, the, 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 the right wings wanted to start the battle immediately, but, of but as promised, the policemen protected us. So we could go home and wait until they uh, uh, somehow got so drunk that they forgot about the intention of, of beating us. And that was our general policy in that period of time, that we didn't drink that much alcohol as them, so we were faster and smarter as they had been in our battle. But also the, polit also the serious art scene uh, was working with the, with the issue of fascism quite often, but I think, think the highlight in the history of this uh, specific encounter was an exhibition that was done in 88 by Werner Fenz. And it was the main exhibition of Stereo Autumn Festival in that year, commissioned by Peter Wutscher, who formerly was the inventor of the music festival of Austrian Broadcasting Corporation. And the whole festival was devoted to the issue of, of the uh, anniversary of Hitler taking over power. And I would like to introduce Werner Fenz to present this part of, the, of our presentation when political, some sort of political activism, it's not activism, but representation of relevance uh, crashed with uh, political activism from the right-wing side, which also had some significant relevance. Thank you.